still buffering, a sister's guide to teens through the ages. I am Riley Smurl. And I'm Sydney McElroy. All right, Sydney. Since last week we got to talk about your thing, and you got to torture me for like 32 minutes, this week it's my thing. It was an important and productive conversation, and thank you for engaging Uh in it with me. But it's my time to shine. You go for it. What do you? Riley's time. What what question do you have this week? Okay. So I just want to talk about this thing that like I, as a teen girl feel very passionately about okay um when <laughs> that's you, good I'm when, glad. <laughs> when you were a teen girl when you were a teenager uh did you have strict restrictions on what you could wear or put on your body in terms of schooling like a dress code at school yeah <laughs> <laughs> is that, is that yeah. what you're asking yes <laughs> it was, it was, a was good, there a dress code <laughs> yeah it's a good roundabout way to ask like, did you have a dress code <laughs> Yes. Yeah, absolutely. We we had a dress code. It varied because, as you know, you did the same thing. I went to a private school for a while where mm-hmm. I had to wear a uniform and then public school after that. But right. yeah, there were always rules about what we could wear. Mm-hmm. What was your uh, dress code like? Because I recently have been facing some troubles on the social medias and the uh, real lives about what I'm wearing and what I believe about what I should be able to wear. So I'm just wondering, like, what what were you allowed to wear? Are what you getting you in think? Twitter fights? I may have gotten in a little subtweeting oh, war, no. maybe. Oh no, Riley! <sighs> I just don't, I don't, don't fight on the internet. I don't get angry about many things, but this is a thing that I get angry about. I understand. I have had to refrain from saying lots of things about Donald Trump recently. <laughs> <laughs> it's been very difficult, but there's no sense of fighting on the internet. Yeah. But um, but no, I'm I, I'm happy to talk about this thing you feel passionately about. Now explain to me, let's what it was the main thesis of the argument on Twitter, um, so that I can kind of understand. You okay, know. so I'm not directly qu- quoting the tweet that angered me. Sure, but the tweet in a sense basically said, "I know it is getting warmer outside." This is what this guy was saying, this right. college age guy. I know it's getting warmer outside, but ladies directed at women. Please cover yourselves up. And this is this actually is a direct quote from the tweet. That stuff is supposed to be for your husbands. Yeah. yeah. That is what the tweet was. Yuck. And that is what angered Yuck. me. Yuck. I don't like anything about that. I hate all that of it. That assumed all kinds of things. There are so many things wrong with it. That was entirely inappropriate. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I understand why you were angry. Mm-hmm. I understand why you felt the need to respond. And they were great subtweets, too. Got a lot of retweets. <laughs> Got a lot of favorites. <laughs> In case you're wondering what subtweeting was, still, there's a perfect example right on my Twitter page. Okay. People can check out all that. Uh-huh. Right now, people are going, I got to look at what was this fight? <laughs> what, did pe- what did she say? It was only like two tweets long, but still. No, that's good. Well, I'm glad you stood up for all of the stereotypes mm-hmm. and... and um, because not only oppressive. was this guy assuming that uh, women should wear what he tells them to, and we are supposed to cover ourselves up when it's warm outside. He was also assuming that all women will eventually get married to a man. Yes. Which is not true. And he was also applying this oppressive patriarchal dress code just to what he is defining as ladies and mm-hmm. women and girls without... Not people. It, with with no regard to, you know, what, yeah, what people, yeah. how people define themselves or the fact that you know right and if you scroll on later through this conversation where other people have directly replied to him and said like dude come on stop it this isn't cool he was like well i just don't want to be walking around campus and have to see a girl with half of her leg showing with half of her leg with showing? half of her leg showing now i'm just curious is it a dress code right now where you wear pants that, that have one full leg and then the other <laughs> leg is like a short like like cut off at the knee, so like you have one. I think he meant the other. So half. like half of one leg showing. <laughs> I think he meant like the like knee down. Right, but like, just of one leg. No, both legs. Oh, okay. Not just so he doesn't want on. he doesn't want to see calves. I guess I guess he has a thing against him. Oh. I guess his direct quote was your legs or your quoting butt cheeks. Your legs or your butt cheeks. Mm-hmm. Now, if you have a pair of pants that only reveals your calves and your <laughs> butt cheeks, that's a creative pair of pants. I <laughs> applaud you for being able to create that <laughs> creation. If you made those, you belong on Project Runway. You really my do. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see your portfolio. Um, so, so what I take it the dress code that your dress codes that you're concerned about are especially ones that apply more to women than men. Well, yeah. Female students and male students. I mean, the only dress code that really exists is for women, not for males. Well, let's let's talk about 
so when I was younger, we definitely mm-hmm. had dress codes, of course, right. you know, and, and we'll stick with, um, with public school first. Okay. So when I was in public school, uh, we just had rules like, I mean, a lot of it was directed mainly again, like you said, at female students. Right. Uh, and there were differences. I remember there was a policy for girls and a policy for boys. Mm-hmm. Now that was it. Just def- what they defined as, you know, girls, girls and, and boys. boys. Uh, and girls could not wear, like, for instance, I remember one source of frustration was spaghetti straps. Mm-hmm. I had lots of, like, dresses that violated yeah. that. Like, dresses that weren't, like, particularly right. like, low cut. I mean, I, like, a lot of dresses for 11-year-olds have right low cut. Low v-necks. <laughs> yeah, like, trying to show off cleavage. Yeah. No. Uh, but, but I remember that was a very cumbersome rule for, for dresses more so. Mm-hmm. But I remember spaghetti straps were a big issue when I was in school. And then the shorts and skirt length. Yeah. So for us, the length of your shorts or skirt had to be, if you stood up and held your arms at your side, mm-hmm. they had to extend past the ends of your fingertips. Right. So if your shorts or skirt stopped before your fingertips did, then you uh, you were sent home. Right. I didn't see that enforced a lot. I know it, it no. existed. And it, again, it yeah. was it made buying clothes hard because you'd go to the store and have to stand there and check out the length of everything because mm-hmm. even if it looked fine even if you looked at it and it didn't look like it was particularly short you'd be surprised sometimes like boy my arms are too long i guess yeah. <laughs> like, um, so my fingers are too long or something yeah uh one of my teachers was telling me about how when he was student teaching which i guess was about 30 years ago 20 or 30 years ago so before you were in school mm-hmm. probably um how that was the rule the arm length and the fingertip length sure and there was a girl that was a cheerleader i think is what he said and who had longer arms so she got dress coded because her skirt was like a modest length but because it technically didn't come to her fingertips but then there was a girl who compared to her had shorter arms and her fingertips came almost right below her hips like barely below her hips yeah so she could wear like basically whatever she wanted and she wouldn't get dress coded. That's a really silly rule. It is. They've changed it now. That's not what the rule is anymore. Really? It's now, in the book, it says mid-thigh or lower. Which would mean, to tell you whether you're being inappropriate or not, they would have to get out a ruler, measure the length of your thigh, which again is different on all people, and then see... Figure out where half where point half is. is and yeah. That seems awfully invasive. It does. I think that if I were a student or if if I look to the future and think about like Charlie going through this Mm -hmm. or certainly even you. Yeah. You know, if I imagine an assistant principal, I'm assuming that's who would enforce this, uh, measuring your thigh at Uh school. I kind of have a problem with that. And it happened to one of my friends. She was wearing a skirt, which I mean, I feel like if you look in the mirror and you're like, this looks kind of inappropriate. I feel like this could be not bother people but just bother me and make me feel uncomfortable then it's probably something that so i might say something but if you look in the mirror and you're like this is fine i don't think there's anything wrong with this and a male like a an adult man comes up to a 15 year old girl and says this skirt skirt is too short let me measure your thigh which happened it would make me feel very uncomfortable were her parents cool with that i don't know because I don't think I'd be okay I just remember that. her walking into her next class and saying, I can't believe they dress coded me for this. They said my skirt was too short and my thigh is however many inches and her skirt was like a half of an inch too short, technically. Now, this these rules, again, are, they, are there specific, like they're laid out for just girls? Yeah. So there's guys like, don't have any short or well, there's skirt like, length restriction, anything yeah. like that. Yeah. Like there's there's the, nothing... Yeah, in the handbook, there's, like, a column for guys and a column for girls. And the only rules for guys are, like, you know, you can't wear clothing with inappropriate language or violence or whatever inappropriate stuff on it. And they can't sag their pants. And they can't wear bandanas or hoods. But, I mean, neither can girls. We can't wear our hoods on our hoodies or wear bandanas or anything like that. Yeah, that was always a rule. Um, Same thing back when I was in school. Uh, And, uh, you know, I think we can accept that that certain freedoms of speech don't necessarily exist in a school you they can't don't. wear a shirt with inappropriate language no. or hate speech you know something right. like that and and I, i'm okay with that i accept that yeah. and i think that's fine yeah i'm glad it doesn't exist outside of school i'm glad you can do whatever you want to do outside of school but right. in school i think that's fine um but then we had the same thing like no hoods no bandanas mm-hmm. you couldn't sag your pants because that you you any, basically if your underwear were showing it was bad. Right. And that was true for Which boys is, and girls. I guess is understandable in a sense of yeah. whatever. But I mean, eh, 
Yeah. 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 But there are other problems with that. But yes. yeah. Um, but then there was a, um, like the hat thing. That was the thing I never got. I don't get it. Why can't you wear a hat to school? I don't understand it. Is it because it's like like old school, like manners? Like it's rude? Like it's Um, just rude to wear a hat indoors? Is that where it comes from? Because, you know, like there was a time when it would be considered rude to go into a place and leave your hat on. Like you would remove your hat because it was impolite. Right. Is that where that comes from? I have no idea. Like I just want to wear like a beanie on the back (laughs) of my head. And one of my teachers said they're afraid it's because we'll hide weapons under our (laughs) hats. But I could just imagine someone, like, if they brought a weapon to school, which, I mean, I would hate that. It would be awful. Uh But, like, wearing, like, a cowboy hat, (laughs) pulling off their hat and pulling out some sort of weapon. weapon under their hat? Under their hat? Why would that be? That's like a cartoon character. Why would that be where you would... I mean, like, I know... Okay, for instance, there was a trend for a while when I I was younger where you would want to wear really giant jeans. Mm Mm-hmm. I had a few pairs of like really huge, um, like the the waist fit me, but then they yeah. would just expand down to these giant, not bell bottoms because bell because bottoms all of like it were was tight and then flared. Yes, yeah. and uh, like mine would have like rainbow stripes down the side or something. Cool. And they were like Jinko was the big. Uh-huh. That's who supplied these, and it was like a skater fad. Yeah, I wasn't a skater, like but Avril I like exactly. Yeah, but I liked the the look, mm-hmm. and so like I had some of these giant jeans, and then I'd wear them with like these little baby doll tees with like cartoon characters on them and stuff. So cool, which was all fine. By the way, this was all within the dress code. Uh-huh. Uh, nobody ever stopped me from doing that. Um, but I imagine like if I was going to hide a weapon, my giant jeans would have been a much better would have been a much better place than, than your like hat, a, like a ten gallon hat. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to wear a beret. Well, okay, that's very different. I did, I don't want, I have no desire to wear a beret to school. <laughs> I had lots of berets that were very nice or like newsboy caps that were very cute. Uh-huh. Is that still very in? stylish? Is that I, still a, I don't is that know still any. a fashion? Trend? I have never seen anyone wear really? one. No. I just want to wear a beanie to school. I don't see what the problem is. I just think it's very stylish. Do you very mean a toboggan? A beanie? Is that a toboggan? A toboggan's a sled. Because when I think beanie, I think of like the little like rounded cap with like a propeller on top. <laughs> and I'm, I know you what? don't. I know you don't mean that. But every time you say beanie, that's what I picture is like a little kid with a lollipop and suspenders, and he's got the no. the rounded cap <laughs> with a propeller. Do you yeah. mean you mean what I would call a toboggan? I guess, but like when I think of toboggan, not a sled, but a hat, I think of the ones with like the little like pom poms on like top and like the long top. ears. Well, see, I just call it all a toboggan. That's different. But you mean it being... Okay. You know, in, in Canada, it'd be called a toque. What? My Canadian friends have taught me that. It's called a toque. No. Oh. The more yeah. you know. There you go. <laughs> Either way, that. I never understood the hat thing. But yeah. I think I think what we're getting into is the interesting idea of, like, why dress codes exist. Yeah. Because I understand why you can't wear something that's that's hate speech on your clothes yeah. in school i understand why we have to wear clothes in school yeah. for instance i think that it would be distracting for all of us regardless of your your gender or sexual yeah. attraction or anything else just generally distracting if there was someone naked isn't that also illegal to be yeah naked yeah you're in not public? The, yeah you can't just walk around yeah. naked so like i i get that concept and we're right. also let, sanitary issues also That'd like really every, like you're sharing debt like you you know, every the, class period, mm, you sit in a mm, desk, mm. somebody just sat in. And no. so if it was just everybody's naked butts. Ew. Yeah. No, I mean, no. like, there's there's a lot of issues with that. Yeah. So, like, I get that you have to wear clothes to school. Yeah, that's understandable. Why, though? Like, wh- what is the root of it? Especially the idea. And I would say that most schools are, like, probably more progressive ones are. But mm-hmm. a lot of schools still have specific rules for girls yeah. and specific rules for boys. Yeah. Why? Well, what I've always been told, which I've never agreed with ever since, like, elementary school, which I don't understand still, is why me wearing something that is comfortable for me, like, for example, yoga pants or leggings that are Mm -hmm. completely not see-through. Like, I understand if I didn't want to wear, like, see-through pants. Like, that's basically being (laughs) naked. Like, like tights or hose. Is that a trend? No. Just wear see-through pants? No. Okay. no. Okay. But, like, they're completely <laughs> opaque. Thank goodness. You can't see through them at all. Right. They're like you're wearing a pair of skinny jeans. But they're to- telling me that that is distracting for... They say other people, but they mean a boy's education. And that they if will not be able to pants? focus in class. Yes. If I wear yoga pants or if I wear spaghetti straps or a shirt that shows, like, a sliver of my stomach, that would be distracting for other people's education. So they're 
solution is to take me out of class and take me away from my education because it's too distracting for another person's education. Because they're so distracted by your legs and yoga pants. Right. Even though we're sitting down on a desk the whole class. And yoga pants, like, cover your whole leg. Yeah. Like, it's less revealing than wearing a pair of, I guess, if you're bothered by calves again, like wearing a pair of capri (laughs) pants. Like, it's less revealing than those. (laughs) Are capris in? I mean... It's the only pants we can wear to school when it's hot outside because our shorts are too short and we don't want to wear long, full-length pants, so we have to wear capris. See, I don't understand the yoga pant problem because sweatpants were always fine. Well, sweatpants are fine. Okay, but aren't like yoga pants or like tighter sweatpants? See, to me, I don't own sweatpants. Like when I'm trying to be comfortable at home or wherever, Mm -hmm. I wear leggings or yoga pants or whatever you want to call them. I just don't. I feel like everybody wears yoga pants these days. Yeah. I mean, they're comfortable. Now, let me ask you this. If a guy were to wear yoga pants or short shorts Mm -hmm. to school that didn't meet the dress code, is he cool? I don't know what they would say. Because it's not listed under the guy's rules, right? It's not listed under the guy's rules. I think they're assuming, wrongly assuming, that a guy would never feel the desire to wear any of those things. So that's discriminatory. Yeah. Which, I mean during the only time they ever make exceptions is during spirit week when it's like you know character day or spirit Mm -hmm. day or whatever they aren't as strict but you still have to wear like clothes but then on there was one day over (laughs) spirit week you look very confused right now well why would it be okay to be distract you during spirit week we don't learn anything so i guess that's true we're just well no i mean that's what they're saying like we're a school we're supposed to teach you but during spirit week we accept that you won't learn this weekend homecomings this weekend so everybody's gonna be just all flustered with that right so wear whatever you want yeah because we don't care if you're distracted they aren't as strict i guess is the thing they still say oh there's a dress code but there isn't like you know there isn't yeah. And the only time I've ever seen um, a boy wear something that you would think would only, the dress code only apply to girls, was during Spear Week on the Monday. The day was called America Monday. So, uh, America, America Monday? Monday. Uh huh. Um, so I guess you're supposed to wear red, white, and blue. Okay. I don't know. And a that guy was showed up. never a day we had. Yeah. Uh, a guy showed up to school wearing a, like, Speedo shorts. Mm hmm. Like, Speedos shorts. Yeah that were like tie-dyed like white blue and red sort of like uh that was the sketch on saturday night live will ferrell did that yeah 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 okay like that and he, no one said anything and it was cool yeah it was totally cool <sighs> see i would i would wager that if a guy really wanted that if any guy wanted to wear short shorts or wanted to wear yoga pants i bet you he could get away with it probably from an administration well standpoint. they wouldn't say anything well and if he if they did all he'd have to say is look the dress code doesn't, doesn't say, say anything, anything about anything that about for boys me pants. yeah you know you specify that girls i right. identify as a boy and so i don't have to follow mm-hmm. that dress code yeah and it would be fine which is totally ridiculous because then why can't, can't you wear your pants yeah. yeah and i guess it's like i mean there are clothes that are designed in mind with females and there are clothes that are designed in mind for boys like i myself wouldn't go out and buy a pair of like cargo shorts that were made for men because one i don't know men's sizing there are probably girls that would wear cargo shorts because they look very comfortable they have a lot of pockets like store all your things in them um but like guys only have one design of shorts to buy if you're only looking at male aimed clothing and that's all fine they only have one style of sweatpants that's all fine that's their comfortable clothing Mm -hmm. our comfortable clothing we aren't allowed to wear because it's not appropriate even though it pretty much is like, even though I'm it not, is appropriate yeah, yeah. i'm not showing yeah. skin and i will tell you as a woman who has worn uh cargo pants mm-hmm. not shorts i don't think of well i had cargo pants that i cut into shorts that i wore for yeah. a while i just mean like but no i'm just saying like they're super yeah. comfortable yeah they like, look really right. comfortable <laughs> they're very comfortable and like they're comfortable for guys they're allowed to wear them even if they're technically not mid-thigh they and they're practical all the pockets they are yeah you can carry lots of things yeah but like any <laughs> male designed shorts also you can carry lots of things if you wanted Weapons. to carry a weapon that's probably again a much more practical way of doing it than a hat yeah why can't i wear my berets <laughs> why can't i wear my toboggans it it brings up the issue because we both attended private school for some mm-hmm. portion of our of our education that and, and there are some people who are in favor of uniforms for all schools right and that does, and I'm not saying I'm one of those people, but it does, in a sense, solve that problem. You're not 
picking out one gender. No, everybody just, this is what you're supposed to wear. Right. Although now when I was, I, I only went to elementary school for private school, but mm-hmm. we did have a uniform for girls and a uniform for boys. Mm-hmm. What was, you, you actually went when you were a little older. Yeah. So is it different? Because when, I mean, when I went, just to give you an example, I was so young that we all wore like the plaid jumpers yeah. with blouses underneath. Yeah. And boys all wore like polo shirts with pants. Yeah. And there were different colors of the uniform, but like that was mm-hmm. it. Yeah. And boys wore that, girls wore that. That was the whole thing. W- was it the same? Like, could um, you wear the same thing as a, as a one of your male I guess you students? technically could. In elementary school, you still couldn't. And I don't think at the local private high school that most people who went to my private middle school, which doesn't have a high school, mm-hmm. attend, there aren't female uniforms. They're all pants. But when I went to middle school at this private school, mm-hmm. there was skirts that girls could wear and there were pants that girls could wear, like khaki pants, which is what you could wear. So you could wear almost the same thing or, or the same thing yeah. that the boys are Because all boys could wear was either a navy polo shirt and khakis mm-hmm. or a burgundy polo shirt and khakis. And that's all we could wear unless you wanted to wear one of those shirts with a skirt. But then again, they measured your skirt to make sure it was length. See, if they would just, that would be a thing that uniforms would get it right if they would just take off the gender, dis- like, discrimination. Right. Like, basically just this, the here are, here are the range of outfits that are acceptable to mm-hmm. wear, wear one of these things. Yeah. And you're fine. And we also had, like, sweatshirts that were for the school and fleeces and stuff like that that boys and girls could wear. I remember when I was in, when I was in private school that one of the big things was trying to find ways to individualize yourself like ways to express Mm -hmm. who you were since all of our clothes were the same right so uh shoes were a big deal could you wear whatever shoes you wanted they had to be white see ours could only either be all black or all white they couldn't be a mixture of the two really Mm -hmm. i think boys were allowed to wear black shoes girls had to wear white shoes Mm -hmm. and uh that was a big deal although you know what it was a big deal what kind of white shoes you were wearing except that all girls wanted to wear keds Mm mm-hmm like that was the status symbol so mm-hmm. i mean if you wore keds you were cool and if you like me i had like these white reeboks mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> that weren't particularly flattering i also had big feet but mm-hmm. um yeah yeah mm. so, and, and, and we had rules like you couldn't wear like you could wear whatever earrings you wanted as long as they were studs like you couldn't wear dangly yeah, earrings that was a rule for us and uh uh, in your hair um now actually i i think i got away with because mom used to put a lot of bows in my hair so many tons of bows and i don't think it was a problem i think they just had to be the right color Mm -hmm. i think it was like the same array of like yellow and blue and white i think were our colors yeah green maybe and those were like the elementary school colors i think still when i went there yeah because we went to the same Mm -hmm. private school yeah but like we could only wear since our colors were Nervandy, uh, navy and bur- <laughs> navy and burgundy. You could only wear navy, burgundy, brown, black, or white hair accessories. Yeah, and all of our socks had to be white. Yeah, and cover your ankle bone. Yeah, we had that. A lot of people wore the frilly ones, but mm-hmm. that was an elementary. That was an elementary. Yeah. Um, there was a hair restriction for boys, not for girls. How long it could be? Mm-hmm. Really? Like it couldn't cover your ears. That's almost more restrictive for boys than for girls, then. Yeah. Because, I mean... There was no length issue. Yeah. You, with As a female, your hair could be as long or short as you Yeah, there was a girl wanted. in my class that had her hair, like, past her waist. And it's totally fine. But there were guys That's that had, like... The teachers would come into our class every week for a random outfit, uniform check, whatever. Mm-hmm. And they'd be like, oh, you need to get your hair cut before next week, before we come back. What's hard about that, though, is that the... It... it I don't, I, uniforms are a problem for me. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not saying that they're a bad thing necessarily, but for me personally, like I liked being able to express who I was through my clothing. That was uh, an important part of being a teen for me. Right. Like figuring out who I was, was like going through the, the awkward phases where like I did wear the giant jeans for a while, Mm -hmm. even though I was not a skater, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but I had the, I had the vans. To, yeah you know the shoes that those were, are back in style i uh, see have a several pairs of those. i had the vans uh-huh. so i was cool uh and then like i went through my all black phase for a while because i was very angsty. i've seen pictures from that phase i was very angsty i was very moody i wore nothing but black all day every day like uh-huh. black jeans black shirts black turtlenecks there's a turtleneck black again turtleneck black oh, turtlenecks and a black beret when i wasn't at school but then but they, couldn't wear it i school. couldn't wear it at school yeah and then you know like as i started to figure out who i was and clothes became less important in a sense as i got older um i mean certainly now it's like whatever's functional but like 
it was it, it was very important to me. Yeah. Um, and I I don't know that. I mean, my kids who wear uniforms probably are like, I don't really care that much. Yeah. But it was uh, easier. I mean, I guess you didn't have to pick out whatever you wanted to wear the next day. And you don't have to apply those kind of, uh, because they really are like sexist rules. They are. That, yeah. You know, women wear this, men wear this, based on the idea, like you said, that that girls are going to distract boys, mm-hmm. which is is such a problem. And we yeah. we hear about that in the news a, a lot of, about dances. Like, mm-hmm. girls wear certain dresses to dances and they're not allowed in. Right. Because it's distracting. Mm-hmm. And that is, it makes me uncomfortable on multiple levels. I mean, one, you're assuming a lot about the girl, about boys, mm-hmm. about all girls and all boys. Right. Uh, you're you're also, we're, we're making these decisions based on older, you know, adult, yeah. male or female, looking at a young girl and telling her if she is too sexually attractive yeah which i mean at my school there's i guess five principals five yeah five Mm -hmm. and i want to say three of them are male so i guess it's like i guess not half and half because it's an Mm -hmm. odd number but yeah that'd be like a most of the time it'd be a man coming up to me and telling me that i was too revealing which makes me very uncomfortable that i am a young girl mm-hmm. not even i'm not an adult i'm not 18 i'm 15 and there's this adult man coming up to me and looking at my body and looking at what i'm wearing and saying this is too distracting i guess he's judging on himself so he thinks it's too distracting well, which and, makes me feel uncomfortable and to be fair it wouldn't be any better if it was an adult woman coming up to you and saying no because then it's a woman judging my body no either way i mean that there is there's a level of discomfort I have with the idea that adults are looking at teenagers and saying I am distracted by you. Yeah, I mean because we have to. I mean this is like a sexual connotation. Yeah, like Which and is, so I'm yeah. assuming your fellow students are also distracted by you, mm-hmm. and it is harming their education. So therefore, you have to change what you're wearing. Which is like half my teachers are males and half my teachers are females. If any of them told me you are too distracting for me to teach to for other students to pay attention in class i would just never want to come back to school (laughs) no i feel so uncomfortable well i think mom and dad would have a problem with that yeah person (laughs) definitely um i know i would because that's not that can't be what it's about Mm -hmm. and i understand like some of it some of it then is about distracting some of it is about like outdated kind of probably like rules of politeness Mm -hmm. and and that kind of thing like like the hat thing like don't wear a hat inside yeah and so and so you see that kind of follow through with why would we why in the world would we have different rules for boys and girls right well because we used to back when we didn't know any better and so now we still do yeah a lot of this it seems like could be solved by having one dress code for all people which i think makes sense i get having a dress code in general i get that i don't get the division of genders which, I mean, when you think about it, the dress code for boys is what you are doing with the clothing that you have, which is like how you're wearing your pants. You can't sag them. Mm-hmm. How you're wearing your, I don't know, your hoodie. You can't put the hood up. When it's girls, it's judging what clothes you are allowed to own and wear. It's not like you can't wear those shorts like that. You just can't wear those shorts at all. You can't wear that shirt like that. You just can't wear that shirt at all. Right. I mean, it's telling us what we can and can't buy, which is like, I mean, I go all summer and I buy new dresses and clothes and skirts and stuff, and I go to wear them on the first or second day of school, and they're like, you need to leave. That's too inappropriate. See, and I, I mean, I, I know that it, then it, we get into a weird gray zone because it's kind of like, um, you know, you, you'll know something's bad when you see it, and you can't use that. You can't use, that's not an objective yeah. measure. You know, that's not a, you know, I know, right. I know pornography when I see it. That's an old quote. Never mm-hmm. mind. You don't, you don't know what... <laughs> Riley, no, we'll pretend like you don't know what pornography is and move nope. on. <laughs> nope. Um, but so you have to apply some standard. There has to be something written down mm-hmm. that you can use objectively and measure and whatnot. Right. And so things like shorts length and stuff come up, mm-hmm. but like it has to be done in a less gender discriminatory way. Yeah. And it can't be so that you don't distract other. I mean, it just has to be like, these are common decency standards. Yeah. We wear clothes out in public. So you must wear clothes in school. That makes sense. And if we want to do things, I mean, I, I understand if we don't want to be revealing, you know, our butts. Right. In school. Like, I, I get that. That's but who would fine. be comfortable? I guess there are probably people who are comfortable with their bodies that would do that. But I just don't 
I feel like a majority of people wouldn't even be comfortable themselves wearing something like that. No. I know I wouldn't be. No. I mean, I'd pull up my shirts and down my skirts to make them more, like, less revealing, more modest. So, I, which, it, mm. you know, and it's got to be about what you're comfortable with. Yeah. You know, to wear as much or as little clothes as you're comfortable with within a certain accepted standard of decency that we apply equally to all students at the right. school. And I mean, maybe it's something that you could even have like a consensus with the students, like have representatives from the student body, mm -hmm. like the, you know, the, your president or vice president, whoever is mm -hmm. you on your student body, you know, representative team yeah. to like sit down with administration and decide like, listen, everybody wears yoga pants. Could you please get over the yoga pants? Like no one on earth cares about yoga yeah. pants. They're just super comfortable. And guys that think they're a girl thing or something, please put a pair on. Because they're really feel, comfortable. See if you feel differently, okay? Because yeah. they're super comfortable and maybe you want to wear them and that's fine. We should all be allowed to wear yoga yeah. pants. Which like, I can never imagine a situation where I'm sitting at my desk in chemistry or whatever and some guy can't focus on his problems because my yoga pants, which I am sitting down, are too distracting for him to be able to focus. Or like my shoulder. Well, and and I'll say on the flip side of that, let me tell you this, Riley. <laughs> All teenagers are constantly distracted <laughs> by well by other teenage not all teenagers a lot of teenagers yeah male female whatever we are distracted in our teenage years because your hormones are just all over the place so it doesn't matter what the people around you are wearing yeah if you're attracted to somebody they might be distracting to you that's okay you're, well, if a human you're attracted being. to somebody and they're wearing turtlenecks and <laughs> and giant jeans ankle length skirts you're gonna be distracted by them yeah if you're attracted and who knows what you're attracted to maybe that's the thing that turns you yeah. on less is more you don't want to see as much yeah that's fine we're all gonna i mean especially in your teenage years you're trying to figure all this out and who you are and what you like and what turns you on and mm -hmm. so all that you're going to be distracted by it on some level anyway it's just ridiculous to think that whether or not a half inch in a skirt Mm -hmm. is going to make the difference for anybody around that that young woman yeah. who was wearing that outfit. Yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah. And it's patriarchal. It is. There was one time when I was not allowed in a club because I was wearing a white, like, underwear tank top. Wait, a club? Like a dance club. Like a dance? You tried to get into a dance club? Yeah. <laughs> I thought well. I looked pretty cool. I had on these, like, red, like, track pants and... Mm -hmm. Keep going. I have my hair all done and... I thought I looked bows. I, it was kind of a sporty spice inspired look. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And I thought I looked pretty cool in the white, you know, tank that, top. that cool, no, cool dance club that you couldn't get into. I wasn't allowed to get into. That's a really but sad story. Just thought it's I'd also really that. funny though. <laughs> <laughs> well, Riley, I agree with you. I think that while I am generally against Twitter fighting, I think you were fighting a good fight. This was called for. It yeah, was it was. That's an important cause. Yeah. I don't blame you for standing up to. What sounds like a very uh, stereotypical, oppressive, patriarchal kind of point of view on mm -hmm. uh, gender and dressing and, and all that kind of stuff. Yep. So congratulations. Thank you. I feel like I won. <laughs> Got a lot of retweets and favorites. You won in my book. Well, thanks. Um, well, thank you again for joining us this week on Still Buffering. We uh, we appreciate so much everybody who's listening, who's uh, the on the Facebook group. There's now a map of where all of our listeners yeah. are. Yeah. Like, that's insane. There are people out of this country, out of the continent, <laughs> listening to us talk about things. It's great. I really, yeah. I, it's wonderful. Thank you guys for all listening and, and thank you for, for making that map and yeah. talking about, uh, we need to figure out who made that map yeah. for us and, and we will mention you next week. <laughs> By name. <laughs> By name. But uh, thank you uh, for for participating on the Facebook group, for mm -hmm. tweeting at us at Still Buff. Mm -hmm. that is our twitter that handle we couldn't get still buffering <laughs> no it's at still buff uh please uh feel free to send us emails at still buffering at maximum .org. org yes and uh especially with questions or anything you might want asked on the show make sure and specify if that's yeah. if that's what you're asking us so that we know it's okay to use your name right um thank you uh to the novellas for use of their theme song baby change your mind thank you to maximum fun for hosting us absolutely check out the other cool shows they're really good i like to listen to them a lot yes they're funny lots of wonderful shows uh most recently um added along with us was schmanners mm -hmm. with our uh with our brothers and sisters yeah travis and Teresa. very McElroy. entertaining very funny yes 
Um, so please check them out and all of the other Max Fun shows. Yeah. So uh, this has been Still Buffering, a sister's guide to teens through the ages. I am Riley Smurl. I'm Sydney McElroy. I am a teenager. And I was too. Hello, Internet. I'm Travis McElroy. And I'm Teresa McElroy. She is my wife. And he's my husband. And it is our pleasure to introduce to you a brand new podcast, Schmanners. It's extraordinary etiquette for ordinary occasions. Teresa, let me ask you this. Can you teach me how to write a thank you note? Yes, I can. How about tips to improve my table manners? I'll do my best. And will you finally explain to me the difference between casual and business casual and cocktail and formal and black tie and all that stuff? If anybody can, I can. But like, it's going to be funny, right? Of course, I'm going to give historical origins and how those manners fit into our everyday lives. How could it not be funny? But also sometimes we'll talk about like burps and farts, right? Yeah, when not to. But we'll still talk about it. Yes. Great. So come join us for our new hilarious show. No RSVP required. Coming to you soon every Friday on MaximumFun.org. It's Schmanners. Manners, Schmanners. Get it? MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported.